Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to look at how to create an environment in Blender. Uh, we're going to create an exterior environment with some hilly land, uh, some water around it, and with some trees that we're going to quickly make using a wicked and done in Blender called uh, Add Sapling. So, um, I've got before me uh, a very easy piece of terrain that I've created from a plane, and then I've used Blender's Sculpt mode to sculpt out this terrain. I'll sculpt it out a little bit more. Um, and this is very, very simple. It's a little bit hilly uh, and stuff. And that's all that's really going on. There's not much more to it than that. If I quickly will build it up a little bit more to make the effect really obvious. And this is it. Simple bit of terrain. Simple bit of terrain. I've added a texture to it. If we look down here in my nodes editor, I've just created a very simple texture using the generated coordinates of some seamless grass. If you don't know how to use nodes, go back and have a look at my nodes tutorial. Nodes are a wicked way of using materials to create textures. Um, so let's have a look at how it's looking so far. I'm going to come out of sculpt mode to object mode and I'm going to go to my rendered viewpoint. And here we go. So this is the terrain. I've just got my grass on and we can see that's all it is. If I zoom in a little bit closer um, there we go. And I'm going to switch to free look mode. Okay, if you've not used the free camera mode, you press shift and F and then move your mouse around and it's like a first person shooter mode. And I can use the WASD keys now to move forward, strafe sideways or backwards. And I can use the Q and E keys to go down or up. And I'm just going to use that to orient my view a little bit and have a look around. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so I'm going to come out of my rendered view mode and go into solid and what we're going to have a look at first is creating a body of water and we're going to use uh, we're going to create a body of water using Blender's ocean modifier so go to your modifiers tab well first of all actually create a plane scale that plane up and drag it over your your terrain so I've created this, just a, a normal simple tr plane then go to the modifiers tab with that plane selected Go add modifier <coughs> and select ocean. Okay, I've selected ocean, and if we have a look around now, it's turned that plane there into an ocean. Okay, another thing we can do now is we can play with the ocean settings beneath here, and we can do stuff like the depth of the ocean, um, how choppy the waves are, the scale of the waves, the size of the smallest wave versus the largest wave, lots of stuff like that. So let's increase the choppiness maybe. And if we zoom out, we see the ocean is quite big. It's almost, it's, in fact, it is bigger than our clipping on my blender level. And I'm going to make the, I'm going to scale now by pressing S on my keyboard to scale. And I'm also going to scale it down using the scale settings on here. I'm going to turn the choppiness down as well. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to move it up so it's over my level. There we go. And I'm going to reorient my view, so I'm going to press Command and F, Shift and F again, sorry. And let's have a look down my hillside now. So let's add a texture to this C. I'm just going to do a very, very simple one for now. <coughs> Excuse me. And unfortunately, it's not going to be a very realistic looking texture. I might have, I might have an image texture for the C. We'll have a look. Water plane. Let's have a look at that one. And there we go. I'll quickly map that out. So I'm going to. Remember, if you've not done nodes before, you really should use Blender's node system. It's fantastic. I'm going to map out the scale of the C texture a little bit. It's still not going to be perfect, but it'll be better. Oh, and it looks very, very tiled there. 
<coughs> excuse me. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our, our C. And if I pan around using my camera, I apologize for the lag on your monitors. My computer probably can't handle this. It can barely handle doing it. We can see now we've got a piece of land. And if I zoom out, it's in amongst a body of water like an ocean. So we've used the ocean modifier there to create some very simple ocean terrain. And we've used the school tools to create the land. I'll move that in a little bit. That's bugging me. There we go. So now let's have a look at adding on a sapling using Blender's add sapling uh, add-on. So let's first of all we need to enable the add-on by going into user preferences and make sure under add-ons I've already got it selected if you haven't find add curve sapling tick it and then click the X and now very very simply in object mode go add curve add tree and wherever our 3D cursor is it will make a tree and we see there's a tree here you can see this stick outline on the left hand side of your screen you should see it's come up with a menu that says sapling add tree this is the properties for this specific tree here we need to be very careful that we set our tree up before we select any other object if we were to click the background the sea the, the terrain right now we wouldn't be able to get the properties back up for this tree that would be lost forever so we need to set everything now down at the bottom under the sapling add tree menu uh, make sure you're under geometry and under the bottom it says load preset under the presets there's four preset trees black chipalo, a black oak, an aspen and a willow if I select the different trees we'll see they come up with different presets of trees and they look very different so I'm going to try first of all black oak to start with with the black oak selected I'm going to tick bevel and that's going to add on some polygons and some depth to our tree trunk and already there we go it's changed from a curve it's now been converted to uh, a polygon so it will be when we're done I'm now going to go to branch splitting this is where we control the branch sentence for our tree we can set a number of base splits which is how many times towards the base of the trunk the tree splits into different parts at the minute this is set to two if I change that to one and zero we can see it changes how the tree looks However, every time we add a base split, we also increase the polygon count of our tree. The higher the polygon count, the longer it will take to render, and it will be worse for our game level. Our computer won't be able to handle it. So I'm going to set it to 2 like it was. Uh, we can also set the levels, which is the amount of branches on each level. So if I turn it up to 3, we can see lots more little spindly branches have appeared there, and it makes it look more realistic. Finally, I'm going to go to leaves. I'm going to tick show leaves so we can see leaves on the end of the branches. It's going to take my computer a second to work this out because there's so many levels. And if we zoom in there we can see the leaves have now appeared. If I untick them we'll see they disappear and reappear. Under the leaf settings there's two different shapes of leaf. Rectangular leaves and hexagonal leaves. I'm going to choose hexagonal we can texture these but we're not going to go into texturing today because it's a bit more complicated and involved and perfect when we're happy with our tree make any last minute edits you need to I'm going to go back into my branch split and actually change the amount of levels and we'll change the amount of leaves as well that's better when we're happy, we can then texture it. So I'm going to select my leaves and I'm just going to create a very simple green texture for this now. Like I say, I'm not going to do advanced texturing with this. And likewise with my branch and the trunk, I'm just going to make a very simple dark brown texture. And if we go into rendered viewport, I'll turn on ambient occlusion in my world so we can see it clearly. We can see we've got our tree now. So let's scale this tree down. So Select your tree by right clicking, press S for scale, and then use your transform tools to move it around on your level where you want it. And if you want another one, simply repeat the process. Go add curve add tree. Select the preset under the properties. We'll make this one. We'll stick with the black chapello. Bevel it. 
we'll add a few more branches to this one. And we'll add some simple leaves. And there we go, perfect. Once again, select it and apply the materials that you want. I've already got these set up, so quickly do that. And then scale your tree down to size. And it's as simple as that. Next thing we need to do, last thing for our environment to make a simple environment, we're going to create a very simple skybox using Blender's sky texture. Go to your world settings, which is the green globe over here. Under surface, click use nodes. Go down to your node editor. Under the node editor down here, you'll see at the moment you're probably on the object node settings, which is this yellow cube. Choose the green globe setting for the, the world settings. You see it comes up background and world output. We want to add a texture and choose sky texture and drag the yellow colour icon from the sky texture and connect it to the yellow colour icon on the background. And then if we go to rendered viewport, there we go, we should see now that we've got our, our sky in the background. I'm going to untick ambient occlusion and if we pan around, we'll see. We've got our, our simple sky box. And there we go. How to create a very, very simple terrain within Blender. Is it as good as Unity's terrain system? Um, no, definitely not. Uh, Unity's is great, as is UDK's, but it's still um, an evolving and good part of Blender's toolset. Good luck with your, your modelling and I look forward to seeing them soon.